Okay, I thought I'd um, show a bit of the process of putting a, a picture onto the leather and tooling it. Uh, this is a drawing my son Robin did for Father's Day a few years back and I've taken a few tracings off the little characters and transferred them to leather. Okay, the uh, tracing's done. Uh, what I do now is just basically uh, take it, turn it upside down, place it onto the leather and then go over the lines and that pushes the pencil mark onto the actual uh, leather and then I cut out the shape with my uh, swivel knife which I'll show you in a minute. Okay. Okay, I've uh, blue tacked the tracing paper onto the leather so it doesn't move. And then with my little stylus thing here, I just go over the lines and that pushes the pencil mark down onto the leather. And some people I think do this when they've already um, processed the leather ready for cutting but I've found uh, my tracing paper doesn't really like water very much and it wrinkles up so... <laughs> I do it dry and then I uh, what we call case the leather which is basically wet it so it goes soft. So yeah, just go over all the lines and uh, we'll see what it looks like in a minute. Okay, there's the uh, drawing transferred onto a little bit of leather there. And then uh, what we'll do now is uh, I'm going to go around the outside while it's dry because I found if I wet it, the next process is rather difficult. I have to use my little, uh, uh, one for a better word, grooving tool. Uh, it puts a little groove around the outside which you normally is where you do all the stitching and it uh, it's just part of the border so uh, there we are right just going to strop the the blade of this uh, tool to get it nice and sharp right that should be about it Okay, um, because the camera is right in front of me, I'm not in my usual position for doing this, so I hope I get this right, otherwise that's a piece of leather wasted. Yeah. It just cuts around and it puts a little groove in there. I'll leave it there because I'll uh, fast forward and uh, to the end but I'll put it in somewhere I can actually do it a little bit better so uh, show you when it's done okay there are the grooves in all the way around and that's where the uh, use the the hole punch I'll put the holes where you'd normally stitch but I use it as a border Okay, so that's that process. Right, same again with this tool. It's um, it's an edging tool. It cuts a little bit of leather off the edge and make a little bevel. So just get that nice and sharp, and then. Uh, Carefully, without stabbing yourself, you go along the edge 
and just trim off a little little bit off the edge and it shampers it well, my leather is quite soft here so it's a little bit more technical so I'm going to go the other way yeah, look at that much easier there's a green you see Okay, now we've got our little chamfer around the edge and the groove in there. Uh, we're just going to what called case the, the leather. Um, I've done casing uh, one process where you actually wet the leather and leave it for 24 hours, but uh, there is another one where which I'm going to do today, which is just wet the leather and leave it for about five minutes or so. Just let it soak in. It doesn't make the leather as soft, but uh, you can still do a very good job. So it just uh, what do they say? It wicks in, and then uh, obviously try not to rub the pencil marks off, otherwise. We're in trouble. So yeah, um, how much water you put on? I think that's uh, down to um, trial and error. Really, the more you do, hopefully the better you get at it. Knowing how much water to put in. So I'm going to leave that for about five minutes and uh, come back to it and then do some cutting. Again, same with the uh, swivel knife here. I'll give the, the blade a quick strop and then uh, give it the best chance to cut the leather nice and smoothly. There we are. Gently to start with. See that? Mm -hmm. Just cut along the lines. You can feel the concentration. Mm. One slip and he's a goner.
Okay, there's all the the swivel knife cutting done. Um, gone over all the lines. So the next job is to uh, get your your little mallet and a nice little selection of tools to do the uh, the stamping out. So I'll use the the bevel one first. So here we go. Okay, as uh, as per usual, you put the uh, the chamfer where it would be, like in real life. So he's got his helmet here, and there's his neck. So obviously his neck is below his helmet. So to make his helmet stand out. Put a little chamfer along there. Trying to stay on the lines. Yeah, is that sharp? Yeah. This one's difficult, but the shield, but we've also got his knuckles there. Um, which one is above which? I think the shield is above the knuckles because the hand is holding the, the sword. Right, that's the basics, I think. Oh, right, we've got a couple of veins or parts of the, uh, the wing there. So what are we going to do? I think we're going to go down there. Next is uh, put the background on. Maybe use those those two tools there. We use the smaller one. I'll go around the outside edge and any of the little fiddly bits, and then the bigger tool I use for doing around the outside there.
Okay, that's given a bit more definition. Now we'll uh, just go around and do the whole of the background. Alright, just going to go over all the detail with my homemade tool here and that will uh, basically bring the detail out a bit more. Right, uh, that's it basically done. I'll uh, do some finishing off later on, but I'm just going to start burnishing the edge. And uh, as I say, this operation takes quite a long time, so I'll uh, not film it all, of course. Basically, just smooths the edge off. Makes it a little bit more appealing. Right, I shall finish it off. Right, just about there. This is one of those jobs, the burnishing, where you have to just put some music on and zone out. I once built a kit car which had a fiberglass body and uh, where they joined the top section to the bottom section there was this flashing line all the way around the car and it actually said in the build manual don't try and do this all at once take it in stages it's where most kit car builds fail <laughs> Anyway, yeah, this is one of those jobs. But it looks good in the end. One hopes. Oop. Alright, there we go. Now what I've got to do is use the uh, 
tool for putting the holes if I was going to sew it but I like putting them around the outside just to finish it off um, oh was the last one yeah like like that one there there you go so I'll be doing that now Don't mess it up now. I'm going to use the ones with less tines on them because I've got some curves going on here. So the hardest part of this job is knowing where to put that light so I don't cast shadows over everything. One so you can see. I suppose so I can see as well. Right, so I'll get this finished off. Just about made it. Mm, that's close. Whoa. Okay, so we're going to have to do a little bit of adjusting here. I might just get away with it actually. Well, I'm going to push it. Mm, a little bit of a, here's my single. Yes, just a little bit of <coughs> modification on that one. There we go. Ta da! I didn't know it was there unless I told you. There we go. Right. Oh, that was a nice little shadow. See how I tell you about the light? There we go. Right, I'll uh, let that dry out and then I'll put a bit of. Um, uh, what did I see on one of the YouTube things? Um, peanut oil. So, yes, yeah, so I'll let it dry out and then I'll put a bit of peanut oil on it. Now I'll bring out the colour, and that's what I did with the little um, imp or whatever he is. The little devil there. It's got peanut oil on it, just makes it a little bit richer. And I shall do the same with that one. Okay. Right. Right, there she is done. Um, well, I hope that was interesting for you. It's a, it's a lovely hobby. I find it very satisfying. And it's quite quick as well. Well, quickish. A couple of hours and look at that. It's done. Lovely. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.